If you come to open source, open science space, there are three documents that are essential to add to any project. One we heard earlier is about license. Choose a license, add a readme. So you're choosing a license so people know how to use your material. You write readme so people know what it is about and if it's useful for me. And the last one is contribution guideline and code of conduct. So people can find your project and know how to use it. People can find your project and know what it is about. But the ultimate aim of any open source project is that allowing people to build upon it. The innovation doesn't happen if there was nothing before us. This is where the contribution guideline is very important. So people know that you're allowing them to use it, but in a what way? What we will do in my talk, I'll try to keep it concise, but uh, also in a way that you understand uh, the, the importance of involving people. So we will consider how to create a positive culture for contribution and collaboration in open projects, give you a practical example of how a contributing.md file looks like, but it doesn't need to be called contributing.md if you're not using GitHub, it could be just contribution guideline, and choosing a code of conduct. And please keep an eye on choosing we are building on lots of open source projects, so we don't need to build everything from scratch. There's a lot of material and references out there. Pick one that matches most your values. So yeah, uh, just so you know, someone asked me if the cat, cat picture is used. I think it has become our mascot, and that's why if you go to our Slack channel in random, we're just literally randomly talking about cats. Um, so I'm Malvika Sharan. I am the community manager of the Turing Way, which is the, the daytime job beside Open Life Science. Uh, that's not my Twitter, but I left it there because a lot of ideas that I'm gonna talk about comes from Lily Winfrey. And I totally, totally recommend you to follow her, Lil Scientista. Uh, you can follow me as well, but I am, I'm always talking on Slack, so I don't think you need more noise from me. So what is a project culture? Um, when we want to build a project culture, we need to think about if we want to build a community. Is this a project that I'm creating just for myself or do I want people to come in and hang out with me? If I want people to hang out with me, how do I want this community to look like? How would, we, how would my members be? Are they going to bring the same idea as me or are they going to be diverse, that they bring different perspective, they challenge me in building my project so I can achieve better than I can do alone. These people are also who help you build and guide the culture, right? But as a project leader, it's your responsibility to set the tone for how your community should look like. Therefore, you need to make conscious decision when you're writing a readme page or when you're selecting a license and when you're creating contribution pathway for others. When you're creating these culture, you need to understand what your personal values that you're bringing in project are, hence it becomes a project's value. And how should people behave? Setting expectation is very important. When someone enters a new space, one of the biggest fear they encounter is not knowing anything. They don't know what to expect. They don't know how to behave. They don't know what kind of behaviors are accepted. Therefore, it's important for you to let them know that this is what this project stands for and this is how you can contribute. And there are a lot of unwritten rules which you want to get out of your brain and write it in a document so someone else can actually read it because no one can read your brain yet. A project culture involves more than just setting a GitHub repository or uh, telling people by email that, hey, come and join me. There is a lot more to collaboration than that. Um, it's more than just a common goal or having different teams working on different parts or exchanging knowledge, but also understand what actually creates those kind of values. For example, if you have to be intentional about the fact if you want a diverse team and therefore make an attempt to create a diverse team yourself, things won't happen naturally. You need to invest into it. If you want to create an inclusive workspace, you need to add a code of conduct. You need to make sure that people are treating each other kindly, therefore they wanna be around each other. And also when you open a conversation for discussion, say that this is open for discussion and say that you're inviting them to be part of it. So it's a language, it's a set of norm, people's expectation, the tools that you use and how decisions are being made. It's a project identity. So how to build your culture? Um, two documents again, 
clear contribution guideline and a code of conduct that is enforced. Coming back to what is community. Community in an ideal world is a set of different people who come together and live in an ecosystem that is nurturing for them. They don't have to be same opinion. They don't have to be same background. They don't have to be same expertise. People, need, people should be allowed to bring their, their skills and combine them in a way that their uh, outcome is a lot more powerful than the sum of their parts. And then what is contribution, right? Uh, if we just talk about GitHub, in GitHub, and again, next week we'll explore a lot more about GitHub. So if you're new to it, um, I will try to make sure that I don't use jargons, but in GitHub, you can go and write issues that a lot of you have created in OLS3. You've created an issue and you've become actually a contributor of that repository. And this is a picture from the Turing way. You can see Sarah here and that's me and there are a lot of other folks. In the GitHub, you put it as a file, which is called contributing.md. And as I said, if you're not working on GitHub, you would still create a page that, that would be called contributing or contribution guideline. Why is it important? So you want to define what the structure of contributions look like, provide guideline how to make those contribution. You ensure that there is a consistency across your community. If people are working in different time zones, if they're not talking to each other, at least they have one place where they know how to find information. And when you write all these down, it actually improves your efficiency. You don't need to always repeat yourself and tell everyone over and over, over what, what all these guidelines stand for. And it also allows you to involve new people, even if you don't know who they are at the moment. If they are able to find your repository, they have this guideline to guide them how to contribute to your project. And who's responsible for that? First of all, owners, uh, meaning people who are leading the project, they are responsible to create it. Contributors, which are all members, they are responsible to follow it. And consumers, like users and members, they can also de decide if they want to share feedback with you. So this is a very, very good contribution guideline from the Carpentries. The Carpentries is another open source community uh, that teaches people how to teach computation. And it is a it is a wonderful page because it's it's just a community page that gives you links to all the places you can find information. So if you're lost, you wanna come back to this page and you know, okay, I wanted to look at trainers or I wanted to look at champions. So you, you, if you have this one page, which is called page of all links, that would be extremely useful for people to come back and orient yourself. But these are generally optional because when the projects are quite new, you don't really have a lot of files that you wanna, you want people to read. You want to create a place for diverse community, right? And you would expect that everything is going fine and everyone's super happy. But what happens if something goes, goes wrong? What if uh, things are not ideal anymore? You want to make sure that people have a place to feel welcome and protected. Therefore, you want to give them a code of conduct. Code of conduct is a set of rules. I'm sorry. Set of rule that outlines the social norms, rules, and responsibilities of an individual project, party, or organization. It's commonly abbreviated as COC. So generally, I would probably just randomly say COC, but that really stands for code of conduct. Do you really need a COC? Yes, you do need a COC. It invites people to your project. It sets clear expectation in your community and tells contributor that you care about your community. Often the misconception is that COC is a, a policy that is making people scared about the fact that uh, they will be, there will be consequences. But honestly, COC is setting tone for your community and making sure that people who would generally not become part of another community because they don't really know if they're welcome, it allows them to look at what are the guidelines. If someone harasses them, would there be any consequences or not? And they can make a choice based on your community culture if they want to become part of it. There are some examples and I'm gonna just quickly show you uh, CSV Conf, which is one of the newest code of conduct that they had developed last year. It's a conference. Uh, so they start with uh, what this code of conduct is, who does it apply on? And they also have two things, which is called enforcement and reporting. And I'll quickly go through that part as well. So here it is, right? They have code of conduct. 
code of conduct is not just a box checking item, right? So it's not like, oh, I want to add all the documents that I would need to add, and therefore I need to add code of conduct without really reading it or meaning it. It's not enough. You need to add enforcement and reporting guideline. You need to make sure that people know how to uh, report, who the report is going to, and what, what will be the process for reports to be followed through. And often you would want to have anonymous reporting because you don't want to put pressure a lot on people. So getting started, uh, I would say that start by brainstorming core words that represent your community value. Consider behavior that you wanna encourage. Think of the process for incidents and complaints and what are the consequences for those acting outside the norm and understand and accept your role as project lead. So before we go, uh, at the end, you need to understand that open source has a lot of work uh, that is always thankless. People are doing a lot of work at the background. Therefore, you need to encourage and reward good practices. You can, if you are willing to, and if you have the capacity to designate a code of conduct uh, and safety committee, do so. Make sure that your code of conduct is quite visible and clear and communicate the process to contributors. Generally, as I said, don't try to create your own code of conduct. There are a lot of great examples of code of conduct that you can take and adapt for your community. 